<laughs> All right, here we go. Hey, everybody. Thanks very much for swinging by and checking out this very important topic we've got going on today. Todd Versations is very happy that you're here watching Todd Puts with us. We have our friend back with us. Please give it up for the executive director of the Clean Label Project, Jackie Bowen. Jackie, welcome. Thank oh, you very much for being here. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me on Todd Bits. It's absolutely my pleasure. This is a very important topic. As soon as this thing broke in the news, I was like speed dialing you via email saying, hey, I think we need to talk about this because, you know, one in five Americans sometime in their life will be exposed to skin cancer. And there was a recall with sunscreen that it just shocked me to death. Um, one of which is because it was such a wide runway of date of time. It's such a massive label, such a massive amount of product in there. And of course, the recall comes at the end of summer, which is ironic or not ironic. I don't know. But nonetheless, I think it needs to be talked about because it's yes. a very dangerous chemical that these guys are recall. And, and the, 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 the word behind it isn't as I think as powerful as what has actually happened. So welcome. I'm fired up for this because I'm very concerned about it. And so I know you are as well, and I know the work that you guys have done has been amazing, so I want to lean into that a little bit. Tell us a little bit about this sunscreen recall, if you would. So it's it's interesting. So the recall is specifically about copper tone products and how and they had measurable levels of, of benzene. So what is benzene? It's a chemical that basically with repeat exposure has been known to cause cancer. Here's what's interesting about this recall is this recall comes on the tail of other recalls earlier this summer also being recalled for benzene. And that was um, some Johnson and Johnson products, uh, right. Aveeno and Neutrogena. So in this case, all of these products, when it comes to the sunscreen, these are not the products that you kind of rub into your skin. These are the spray on sunscreens. So what I feel is that the benzene is not actually coming from the active ingredient that's helping to make sure that your skin, you know, is, is protected from the sun, more so that delivery agent, that aerosolizing chemical that is then right. making it able to spray on. But it's one where um, I think some additional research is obviously going to be necessary to figure out what exactly was the source of the benzene, where exactly was that chemical. But given the common denominators of those recalls this past summer, sounds like it's that aerosolizing um, agent right. that's being utilized. Which is just scary. I mean, it's scary to know. It's scary to me to think that it's like, well, how do you not know? Right. I mean, that's a yeah, hundred dollar like, question. Exactly. And it's not only that it's one where when, when they're recalls, it's one that it's done after the fact, right? right? It's not that this proactive screening is being done before a product goes to market. It's going to market. And then somebody's catching it and saying, no, 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 just kidding. Let me take that back. Right. So it's one where it's more so the problem is not that it, the problem is that it's reactive rather than proactive and identifying these known cancer causing agents in consumer products that we use. And especially what was concerning is some of these products were actually marketed as baby sunscreens. You're right. Exactly. Which is just blows my mind. So back it up a touch. What is benzene? Let's kind of get that out on the table so people can kind of get an understanding of what we're talking about. And you're right. It, it is, it, it can, it's a cancer causing agent it, it, high with exposure, leukemia, blood cancer, the bone marrow, the list goes on and on of really bad things. So tell me real quickly, what is benzene? Yes. So it's this cancer causing chemical and essentially what it's used is in a variety of different capacities as a solvent. So what's a solvent? It's something that other things can be dissolved in. Um, you see it at, it, in a variety of, of different capacities that it can be utilized. But in this case, what I'm guessing for, like we talked about, is really as that aerosolizing agent. Right, right. So one of the things that was written about this, and I, and I'm, I want to lean into this, and I'll, I'll go down this trail, right? You can feel, go where you want to feel comfortable. What, what the company said was daily exposure levels believed to be detected in the product likely would not cause adverse health consequences. And at some point, we have to stop accepting these words, these, these passive words that, that brush things under the table and like, what do you mean likely? You don't even know. Um, make, may not cause advert. You don't even know. I mean, how do we deal with this? It's, 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 it's so like frustrating, the old adage. Right? You can't eat, it's the old adage I always say, you can't drink a Diet Coke and eat a bag of French fries and think you're not going to get any calories. It's just dumb. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, no. so tell me a little bit, you know, um, in one of the areas I want to touch on too, and I'm going to get into real quick is, is what it's doing in the oceans, because this stuff is just nasty, not only in our skin causing problems, but it's also affects the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, whatever you're in as well. Yeah. So I, I would say first in terms of like, like you mentioned that 
those passive commitments of like, no, we pinky swear that this isn't going to cause any adverse action. Right. Listen, if the only thing that we had to worry about, Todd, was a little bit of benzene showing up in our aer aerosolized sunscreen, you know, as we're about to get, you know, snow here in Colorado, it wouldn't be much to worry about. But the no. thing is, we're not just getting exposed to a little bit of benzene in our sunscreen. We've got this whole chemical cocktail, whether it's pesticides, heavy metals, residual solvents, antibiotic residues, um, you know, name it. And we're getting this low, this low level exposure. It's something that's going on our skin. It, it's something that we're getting exposed to through our, through our food. And especially in the case of this one is especially concerning because we're talking about products that are being marketed towards being safe for children. For kids. There's a certain expectation that consumers have around certain words and marketing. In this case, obviously the brand falls short of that. So it, it's, it's frustrating because there is marketing departments, like we talk about marketing departments right. do a really effective job at selling comfort and security. And in this case, the response mm, is no different. No, I agree hundred percent. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's amazing to me when you think about these kind of chemicals in Hawaii are banned, right? They don't yes. even want, they don't even, they don't, they don't even sell them in the state of Hawaii because of the damage right? causing the coral reef. Interesting. It, so if the state of Hawaii is saying, Hey, we don't want it in our oceans. What is at some point, when do we start to realize, well, why do I want that on my skin? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so let's talk about it. So first yeah. there's, there's two kinds of, two kinds of sunscreens for the most part, Todd, right. you've got mineral sunscreens and chemical sunscreens. So your mineral sunscreens are the ones that sit on the surface of your skin. Okay. Mm -hmm. So think of that, like kind of when you're watching cartoons and you see the proverb, you know, kind of the proverbial, you know, sunbather with the white nose, right. this is something where the chemicals sit on the surface of your skin. Think about zinc, titanium. It doesn't penetrate the skin. It just sits on the surface and serves to block the sun's rays. Right. The second type of sunscreen is something that's called chemical sunscreen. It's absorbed into your skin. And it then from there, it, it kind of reflects the sun's rays. What you see is the active ingredients within chemical sunscreen being things like octinoxate, oxybenzone, things that have known links to endocrine disruption and therefore infertility. Here's the thing. When it comes to those types of sunscreens, when think of all, especially, and you think in Hawaii, you've got all these sunbathers going into the water. What happens is that it, when it washes off your skin and it goes into the water, then you almost have this slick on the surface of the water. That is right. the sunscreen. What happens is that the coral underneath needs the sun to be able to grow. So in this case, it's one where because of the years of exposure, because right. of these, these different types of, of chemical sunscreens, in this case, it's one where it's been known to cause some damage to the coral reefs. Hence why you see these states adopting these new regulations being like, you know what, certain chemicals, not only are they not good for public health, they're also not good for the environment. So you're seeing a lot more commitment there, um, which is which is great to see. Uh, so yeah, that's that's basically what's happening in some of these sunshine states is just a really a much bigger commitment to how these chemicals are not only affecting uh, public health, but also affecting you know in some cases also you know they've got they make money through through tourism. So Absolutely. in this case, it's, it can affect both. Unbelievable. So kind of a two part question I'm going to throw at you right now. What should, can, slash, should, slash, can we do to make better choices? And then also, I'd like for you to, you know, based on that question, dive into what you guys are doing as your project on sunscreen, because I think it's amazing work, and it was certainly a deep dive, and it certainly re-energized re my mind thinking about what I'm used, what I use when I'm out playing golf and working out in the yard, this and that's like, whoa, you know, I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. So I did a deeper dive to make sure I was still on the right track. So please share with us kind of that two-part question, if you wouldn't mind. Yes. So first, in terms of what you should do is, you know, when it comes to sunscreens, making better choices, Todd, as you know, both you and I, we're, we're not physicians, we're not dermatologists. No. So along those lines, there's you know, always make sure that if you have concerns about the sunscreen that you're using, speak with your family doctor, speak with your dermatologist. There's different types of best practice out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, as you mentioned at the top of the show, uh, you know, 20% of people are going to be faced with skin cancer over the course of their lifetime. And because of that sunscreen plays such a critical role in your health. So using a sunscreen is important. Using at least an SPF 30 is important. Um, check right. out what the American Academy of Dermatology has to say about, about sunscreens, but making sure to use it, 
as well as to reapply after, you know, certain period of time of exposure, as well as going into the water is going to be key. But along those lines, when you are choosing those sunscreens, there are things that you can, that you can do to make better choices. Clean Label Project did do an investigation into the true contents of America's best-selling uh, sunscreens, testing over 130 of them. And what we sound, found was concerning. Um, Clean Label Project did see, obviously, the presence of the oxybenzone octanoxate showing up in those chemical sunscreens. Mm -hmm. And on the mineral sunscreen, though, too, we also found a few things that were concerning. Um, as we talked about, Zinc, titanium are, are serve as those active in, active ingredients within the right. mineral sunscreen. But what we did see that in some of them, not all of them, is elevated levels of heavy metals. So you're going to think about your lead, your cadmium, your arsenic, because those metals like hanging out with other metals. What it looks like, and again, I'm not a sunscreen manufacturer or, or anything like that. What it looks like is that some sunscreen manufacturers are able to source um, zinc or titanium ingredients that have been um, almost like in a, in a way like cleaned or purified, um, to remove these other types of metals. What we see in some other products are that, that not only do they contain the zinc and titanium elevated levels of these heavy metals. Now, is this going to matter? It, listen, you know, it's, it's sitting on the surface of your skin. Does it really matter? For me, where it matters when we're talking about kids, again, going back yeah. to the top of the show, you're talking about kids sitting at the beach, being at a picnic, parents are being really diligent, making sure to reapply. Kids are going to be eating popsicles, food with their fingers. And in those cases, thinking about putting those, putting their hands in their mouth that has the sunscreen, but also knowing that you're getting exposed to the elevated amount of heavy metals. So along those lines, definitely mineral, mineral sunscreens are going to be a better choice from a public health perspective, from an environment perspective. But along those same lines, mineral sunscreen manufacturers, I also challenge you to make sure that you do your diligence when it comes to that ingredient sourcing, making sure to be much more diligent to use the purified sources of zinc and titanium so that these other types of opportunistic heavy metals like your lead, cadmium, arsenic, and mercury, next on so much mercury, don't get that opportunity to leach in. So a right. lot of really great brands out there, but you know, as consumers do your diligence, ask questions, challenge consumers, use social media, of course, in order to make your questions known. And so others can learn, others can learn as well. Well, look, you know, I talk, I say this all the time. I talk about the positive cost of food. Right. And, and things. And, and to me, this is no different. This is a positive cost of some sunscreen. Right. Do the do this. But you know what? If, if, if there's companies out there making a difference, support them. Right. That's how things work. Right. you got to you vote with your dollars. Put the energy into it. Your point, your, your eloquent point about kids just blows my mind, which is why I was so adamant about getting you going uh, with me on this broadcast, because I think it's such an important topic that when I read what the companies write, and, and it's no different than some of the position that the FDA takes on pesticides, the way they use the word probably, it's just it just becomes mind boggling to me that as American consumers, we go, oh, that's okay. Oh, it's all right. It's, you know, it's likely not going to happen. It's like, we can't accept those words any longer because it's not, it's, it, it's at our, it's at our detriment of our health and to our planet. Yeah, so, absolutely. And consumers are just, consumers are becoming increasingly, um, kind of diligent as well as increasingly cynical, at least I know right. I am in terms of trust. And yeah. it's one where you, what you see is this loss in consumer trust of the government and different federal standards. And what you see is consumers really just like, just like me gravitating toward those brands that are voluntarily choosing to give a damn, not because the federal government requires them to, but because they see that it's like, no, these types of things have an immediate threat to public health as well as the environment. And it doesn't matter that the government's not going to make us do it. In, in terms of regulations, but we see that the tides are turning and we, we want to be part of that change. So make sure to support those brands that are doing that. Absolutely. So anything else, anything else on your, on your mind, anything else in your heart on this subject you want to cover? No, I, I don't mean, think we, so. We I think it we covered hard. it. Yeah. I go, like it. Go to clean label project, check out the report, see what they're talking about. Um, vote with your dollars, pay more attention, stop letting people use words like likely when it comes to your health. Cause I think that's a bad mistake. Start demanding more and vote with your dollars. That's my takeaway. I like it. Sounds great. I love it. So listen, I I, I thank you um, a, a ton for coming on and hanging with me and uh, sharing with us. This is a very important subject. Uh, you know, you have an open invitation to come back here on all these issues. So I want to keep talking about them because we have to. We yeah. have to keep elevating this conversation, you know, for our kids, for our next generation, for the next generation, for the planet, for the coral, for the birds, for you name it. It's all a part of that subject matter. So I do always appreciate you. And I love having you as my friend. And uh, thank you. Come back. 
hang with me. You know, you're always welcome. Appreciate it. Thanks guys. No problem. Thanks everybody for watching Todd Bits. Check it out. Clean label project. Check them out. Let's go. Let's make a difference in this world. Thanks everybody for watching. Take care. Chat soon. See ya. <laughs>